Hey everybody, it's Dave Berman. Welcome to another Daily Laughers video. This is Laugh of the Day number 156 for June 4th, 2016. We're making a video every single day of the year to inspire people to adopt a daily practice of laughing on purpose. I do it every day. Lots of people around the world do it every day. And we know that the body and brain can't tell the difference between intentional laughter and laughing at jokes and humor. When you do this, you feel good and you get a lot of health benefits, especially when you do it sustained for 10, 15, 20 minutes or more and you do it every day, you can really expect to experience a huge change in your life. So we're laughing with people all around the world in these videos. By the end of the year, we'll have guests from all 50 United States and at least 50 other countries. Today, we have our first guest from Arizona here in the United States. This is Jana Zeff Martin and Loti Shea Guest. Hi, ladies. Nice to see you. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks nice for laughing you. with me today. Uh, we are going to do a, a special edition today because we've had a request, and it turns out that you guys have the perfect experience to, to help grant this request to do a video that shows how we can use laughter to help us cope with grief. So, as... as uh, fellow members of the mental health professional community, I, I'm going to ask you to, to kind of take over this middle section of our video today and, and lead us through ways that people grieving, particularly loss of pets, can choose to laugh. So I know we've, we've kind of talked about this before we started recording. I'm just going to throw the ball to your court now and, and show us what you would recommend. Well, what we recommend is with any form of grief, it's important to express emotion. And even though we have the idea that laughter, like I can never laugh again because I'm grieving, um, we can have a lot of feeling. And laughter can just let us get unstuck from whatever emotion that we have going on. So what Jenna and I have put together is a way to begin introducing people that are grieving, whether it's to the loss of a pet or for the loss of uh, someone that's very, very important to them, um, to begin that process. And we do realize that it's a process. Um, and so one, re one thing that we like to do is we like to start out gently with laughter. Um, and... Then we also have a laughter exercise that we've been working on that lets you know all the five stages of grief, which as a mental health counselor um, are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And that's pretty well established that humans just have this natural progression. They go through the process. Universal. Yeah, it is. So, okay, so we're going to we're going to show some ways that people can count on that reliable process condensed down to in a short amount of time and translated into the emotional uh, laughter equivalent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, go ahead and show us then how we do this and everybody can can laugh along. We have a little cameo. Yeah, my husband just <laughs> 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 I see we're laughing already. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, what we'd like to do is we just start out a little bit gently so that people don't feel and no one will feel overwhelmed. So, Jana, we'll just kind of do some a little bit of shy or quiet laugh. <laughs> <laughs> So the shy laughter is one of the classic laughter yoga exercises, and it's not specifically related to grief. It's just a gentle way to ease into this otherwise kind of heavy, started, heavy topic. Just yeah. Warmed up a little yeah. Bit, a okay. Way. All right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll move into the five stages of grief. We'll start with denial, and instead of feeling denial, we're going to laugh. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> then we actually start to begin 
happened to realize what happened and we're feeling angry. So we're going to do some gibberish anger laughter. bring the memory of our of our beloved back into our heart <laughs> and realizing what kind of joy that was for us <laughs> those memories just really embracing them we do it all with laughter <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little, a little giggle jiggle, <laughs> self-love, hugging. <laughs> yeah. And if you're dealing with an animal, remembering what kind of little seats they were. <laughs> <laughs> so the five and stages. Drop a tip on the floor, how they come running if it's a dog. <laughs> So the, the five stages of grief, again, for people who may be trying to just memorize this or they're not familiar with it, it's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And this is a universal human experience, just like laughing and crying are human experiences that we all share. And hopefully this is something that people can uh, use for themselves at a time when they need it. This video obviously will be archived on YouTube uh, permanently. Um, I want to acknowledge the friends, uh, uh, Jim Nelson and Renee Agredano, who asked about this topic. They appeared in a video a few weeks ago. They were the ones in the RV episode. Um, and uh, they, they asked for this because they also run the tripods.com uh, community online for owners of three-legged pets and they have people in their community who obviously lose their pets sometimes so uh, we we want to shout out to them and, and hope that this is useful to them and and I want to thank you both for sharing with us your professional expertise and and your laughter experience and and just to, to close today with with an opportunity for you to share a little bit about your work in Tucson leading laughter 
both socially and for other organizations who pay you as, as laughter professionals. Talk a little bit about, about what that's like for you guys. Well, we've been leading a laughter group for six years, every once a week, every Tuesday, haven't missed a Tuesday, and we lead it together, and we think that that's really magical. We've been um, asked to present at different conferences. We presented at the Conference on Aging, where their topic was depression and the elderly. And we actually even had the, um, the keynote speaker come up to us, and she said, and she was a psychologist who worked a lot with um, depressed patients, and she came up and she said, I got off the plane, and I was feeling kind of depressed. And then I went to your presentation, and she said, and now I'm ready to speak. So she found that even for her, that was effective. Yeah. And we've gone into nursing homes, we've had, we've dealt a lot with people with Alzheimer's and dementia, and found that the, even the family members who feel like maybe my mother or my father doesn't recognize me anymore, we let them know that they may not recognize you, but you can laugh with them. Mm -hmm. And that feeling, a lot of times, will stay with them for at least four to six hours after we've left the facility. And um, and we find that we have worked with the staff at nursing homes, at, at rehabilitation facilities, at retirement homes. Um, just recently, uh, we went out to a retirement home where, where the staff was really involved, and um, they said, boy, you just made our day. We were feeling kind of down. And in Arizona, it gets pretty hot, so people get a little bit down grumpy. And, and grumpy, so uh, when they come to laughter yoga, we do a lot of hot weather laughter and, uh, and kind of get through that. So we find we've worked with all kinds of populations, and it's really been transformative for people. Yeah, we've had several guests recently in other Laugh of the Day videos who have talked about working with dementia patients, so this has been a, a recurring theme lately in a lot of our episodes, so thank you for... Uh, again, reinforcing the applicability of our intentional laughter practice. Jana, did you have anything that you wanted to add about your experience leading laughter? Um, I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I think the magic of us is that we lead it together. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've never missed a Tuesday. We have a very strong commitment. But I think it's magical leading it with my BFF of over 30 years. <laughs> and then we play off of each other and who's in the room. And it's just, it's like my favorite hour of the week, you know. Um, so, and, and I like the diversity of groups. Yes, of course, the majority of the outside gigs have been like with nursing homes and assisted living. But we, a domestic violence shelter in rural Arizona is coming to Tucson for a work retreat for their staff. And that's um, a gig we have in three weeks because um, one of the staff there had experienced it. She wants to reward her staff for the hard work that they do. So I love the diversity. You know, I love how it can transform. I mean, even laughing with my husband, you know, if we're having an argument, the minute we start to laugh, it's changed. Something has definitely shifted. So I like that, that, that shift that can occur in seconds. Yeah. Yes. So to offer it to many different types of groups. Yeah. And you know, something we do in our group is, in fact, someone just recently said these are kind of like improv exercises. Mm -hmm. We're not just laughing. Um, we do a lot of like kind of movement. And, um, and one woman said, this is the only place I can act like a child. Mm. And really feeling like she just looks forward to that all week. And she worked in a big corporation and so she's kind of like I can come here and just let loose and so we find that that kind of um, mixture also can be real helpful yeah um, well yeah. thank you for these insights uh, you know Jana I particularly appreciate what you're saying about the diversity of applications for where laughter fits in and one of the things that's really also emerged as a recurring theme in these videos is how normal it has become to bring laughter professionals into the workplace, to assisted living facilities, healthcare facilities, and so for people who may never have heard the phrase laughter professional before, 
You're seeing lots and lots of them in these videos. We post a new one every single day, and we invite you to subscribe to the Daily Laughers YouTube channel. Please join our rapidly expanding Facebook group, Daily Laughers, now about 2,300 members. We're so excited uh, to welcome new people every single day and to make this uh, just a, a normal, natural part of our daily lives. That's our mission, inspiring people to adopt a daily laughter practice. So we'll be back with another video tomorrow. And ladies, thank you again so much for helping to create this very unique and, and special themed episode. Uh, we hope that the people in the Tripods community can, can find value. And um, I look forward to laughing with you in the Facebook group as the year goes on. Thank, thank you for having us, Dave. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>